In this lecture, we're going to continue our discussion on electromagnetism. Recall that electromagnetism is simply the study between the relationship of electric fields and magnetic fields. And we saw that Michael Faraday was a pioneer in this field, and he came up with the principle of electromagnetic induction, which basically states that only changing magnetic fields will induce or create a current in a wire. And that means only changing magnetic fields will produce an electromotive force, a voltage. Now, he said that, okay, well, we know that a change in magnetic field will produce some voltage, but what factors influence the magnitude or the amount of our electromotive force or voltage produced? Well, after conducting a few experiments, he saw that two things influence the magnitude of our voltage produced. The two things are the following things. The magnetic field itself and the area of the loop exposed. So let's look at this illustration. So in this illustration we have a constant, a uniform magnetic field represented by these blue lines, where uh, blue circles, where these X's simply mean our field lines are going into the page, into the board, and we have this wire circuit that is capable of carrying a current. And we attach a voltmeter to our circuit so that the voltmeter could tell us what our voltage is. Now, when I pull down on this wire, what happens? Well, the inside of the loop loses some of these lines. In other words, if I pull on this, less and less of these lines will be present inside the loop. And that means my magnetic field will begin to change. And so if my magnetic field is changing, that will induce a current inside my circuit, and this current will be read in terms of voltage on this voltmeter. So, he said that if I increase the area of my exposed loop, if I increase this guy, I will be able to incorporate more field lines, more magnetic field lines, into my loop, and that means my voltmeter will read a higher voltage. Likewise, if I keep my area the same, but I increase the number of field lines found inside my loop, if I, for example, go from 12 of these guys to 24 of these guys, my voltage red will also increase. And he saw these results experimentally. So in order to explain these two factors, in order to combine these two factors into one equation, he came up with the idea of magnetic flux. Now magnetic flux is simply the number of magnetic field lines that are passing or running through the area of this loop or some other loop. Now, the equation is given by this equation, but the equation only works for uniform magnetic fields. If these fields are not uniform, that means we have to integrate, so we have to use a bit of calculus. But we're going to make the assumption that our field is in fact uniform. Now the units of magnetic flux are Weber's. Teslas times meter squared. Area is meter squared. So Teslas times meter squared. Now, one last thing. Where does this cosine come from? The cosine of what angle? Well, this cosine is simply the angle between our magnetic lines, magnetic field lines, and our vector for our area. In other words, if we take this picture and we rotate it 90 degree this way, we'll get this picture. <coughs> Our magnetic field lines will be running this way, and our, and our loop will be perpendicular to the field lines. But the area vector will point in the same direction as the field lines. In other words, imagine my face to be the loop, right? And my nose is pointing in the direction of my area vector. That means my lines will be going straight at me, right? So my vector is pointing in the same direction at an angle of zero with my field lines, right? You could take your hand and imagine your hand to be the vector, right? And it's pointing this way. And the field lines are also going this way. So in this picture, my angle is zero. If I plug in zero, I simply get cosine, not, um, cosine zero is one. So I simply get magnetic flux to be B times A minus this guy, because this guy go, uh, becomes one. But notice what happens if I take my loop and I rotate it exactly 90 degrees. 
then none of these field lines will be able to pass through my loop and that means my flux will be zero and that's exactly what this cosine says cosine of 90 is zero and so if my loop is not facing my vec my uh, magnetic field lines there's no flux through my loop and my flux is zero and that's exactly what this states my next question is how does the magnetic flux influence our electromotive force well this is known as Faraday's law and Faraday's law states the following so Michael Faraday was able to come up with an exact equation that gives us the amount of electromotive force or voltage produced due to a change in magnetic field and the equation is as follows now this equation is now known as Faraday's law and it tells us that the voltage due to a change in magnetic field is equal to the change in our magnetic flux divided by the change in time or the time it takes for this magnetic flux change to take place. So to gain more intuition about how this law works and, that, and how this equation works, let's look at the following example. Suppose we have a uniform constant magnetic field pointing parallel to our board going this way that has a magnitude of 0.16 Teslas. Suppose we have a square loop that has an area of 0.01 meters squared and that and the loop is placed this way so that its vector is initially pointing in the same direction as our magnetic field line now suppose I take this loop and I rotate it 30 degrees with respect to our magnetic field so that means our initial angle is zero our final angle is 30 degrees now suppose the time it takes me to make that rotation is 0.1 seconds and suppose my resistance within my electric circuit within my wire is 0.01 ohms now I want to use this equation to find my voltage due to the change in magnetic field as I rotate it because when I rotate it my magnetic field begins to change so I want to find the current induced within my wire as well as the voltage produced so we must first find the voltage and then we could use Ohm's law to find the current so let's begin so we have to use this equation so we have to find our initial magnetic flux and our final magnetic flux this time we know what that is that's given to us so as, as long as we know this and we know this we can find our voltage and then we can use the equation V equals IR to solve for our current so let's begin the initial magnetic flux is simply this guy our magnetic field multiplied by our area multiplied by cosine zero because that's our initial angle that gives us 0 0.0016 Weber likewise to find the final magnetic flux after we rotate it 30 degrees we plug these guys in so these two guys are the same but this is now cosine 30 so this is a bit less than this guy so 0 0.0014 Weber so now to find the change or the difference in my magnetic flux I simply subtract the two guys subtract initial from final and I get negative 0.0002 now I take this change and plug it into my top and I divide it by our change in time which is 0.1 seconds and I get 0.002 volts so my voltage within my circuit is 0.002 volts. Now I could disregard the negative because we're talking about a change. So the negative doesn't really matter in this case. So now I have my voltage and to find my current I simply divide my voltage by my uh, resistance. So 0.002 divided by 0.01 gives you um, 0 0.2. Uh, so my final current in amperes is 0.2 around this circuit so we found the amount or the magnitude of current and voltage produced due to the change in magnetic flux as we rotate from an angle of zero to an angle of 30 degrees this way and that's how Faraday's law is useful